Okay, hello everybody. How are you? Uncle Claude here. There we go. That's a little bit better. Thanks for joining me. Um, I think the last time I spoke with you, I was in San Diego. I think 12 days ago, I was in San Diego, 91 degrees. Left San Diego, went to my, uh, left my home in San Diego, went to my home in Winter Park, Colorado. Um, it's, it's snowing like crazy there right now. It's ski season. It's full winter. So I went from summer to uh, winter, and now I'm in North Carolina for Thanksgiving. We love going out here, and I can maybe I'll even play some bad golf. And um, so I've been all over the place here. And are you getting turkey? Are we getting ready? For, I'm st I'm I'm fantasizing about a turkey dinner. Believe it or not, I'm going to go to my mother-in-law's house. How many people here love their mother-in-law? I love my mother-in-law. I've known her since I was a kid. This woman, cook, it's, it's me, my wife, my sister-in-law, and maybe one other guest, and she's cooked for 38 people. Do you have, you have mother-in-laws like that? It's amazing. We're going to talk today um, about two really great subjects. I have marvelous little notes here just for you guys. And feel free to... Um, Comment on the side there. Uh, comments are going there. Jeff, my, the legend, Jeff, my drear, my beer drinking buddy is on in Asheville from North Carolina. All right. How come I'm a New Yorker who climbed the wall and they let me into California and now I'm in North Carolina. And but I was in color. So I used to say, you know, a lot. And then I went to Colorado and I say howdy a lot. It's, it's like, how the hell are you doing? And you say howdy instead. Right. Isn't that right, Kate? Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. my sister-in-law, um, and um, and uh, so now I'm in uh, North Carolina, and you know, oh bless your heart, you know, <laughs> which you guess what that means? <laughs> or I'm starting to say y'alls real fast uh, out here. So it's amazing. It's a great country, isn't it? Michael Buckles is here, good too. We're going to talk about some really great stuff today. And if you have questions, feel free to throw them in here. Um, we are on Facebook Live. We are on, let me see if I'm on Facebook Live here. Uh, we, are, we are on Periscope. We are on YouTube. We are on everything here. Let's see if I can go live on that. No. Okay. We're going to remove that uh, on there and we're all fine here. Uh, I'm going to talk about generating leads. I think one of the best things about my business is free leads. I talked to people. I touched on this on, when was the last time I talked with you guys? Saturday, when I was in, um, I was still in Colorado, and I talked about how I generate leads. I get all the leads I need, and I don't need many. I just need a couple quality leads to make my business hum. And I think this is, once again, I'm not a contrarian, but your Uncle Claude likes to be transparent. Just give me a few leads. I don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on garbage. Can I say shit leads? I don't want that because it's a waste of time. You call people up, you feel like you're bothering them, the rejection is really high, then the phone, then this phone becomes a cactus again. I'd rather have two, three, five really good quality leads a day, buyers, sellers, investors, uh, consultee, consultees, uh, people I mentor. I've been mentoring for 32 years. Uh, if you wanna learn more about that, go to claudediamond.com or my YouTube page. I know a lot of you watch me on YouTube. But I wanna talk about generating leads through social media. I also wanna talk about something about consulting in lease purchasing or any area of real estate. I think you guys, this is a big email, you guys are leaving too much money on the table. You get you talk to a lot of people. If you're doing your, you studied your strategies with all your gurus at all the seminars, you read all the books, and can I say tape still? My is that we don't use tapes anymore, do we? It's all MP3 and stuff. But we're spending all this money on marketing. I talk to people every week, every day, and there's thousands of dollars on marketing, and you don't have to do that. It's a waste of money. What's the secret of success of any business? Low overhead, high profit. Keep your overhead low. But if you're wasting a lot of money, tons of money on, um, on marketing, you're diminishing your, your net income. You don't need to do that. We have this wonderful thing called social media. And you know what I mean, the Facebook, the Twitter. Um, we're live streaming right now. So I think I'm going to start with consulting and lease purchasing. It is the um, income stream that everybody, most people, except the people I mentor, 
uh, my students know that when you get a situation, let me give you an example. You get a situation where you're talking to somebody nearby, your backyard, or somebody maybe a thousand, thousands of miles away. The deal is impractical. The numbers are wrong. The location is wrong. It's too expensive to, to fix up. Um, it's just not, they don't, or the biggie. Here's the number one. They don't want you in the deal. They don't want to, they don't want to work with you. They don't want a stranger getting control of their house. I know you've heard this before and probably nobody talks about it, but I will. Not everybody says, Hey, hello. Thanks for calling me. Take my house, please. Oh, you want me to hold the mortgage? I'll do all. They don't want to do that all the time. And you know that basically this is a needle in a haystack business. You're looking for an anomaly. Hello, Calvin Jackson. Hello, Sean Osby. All my friends are coming by. Hi, Calvin. It's Claude, not Clyde, but you can call me Clyde. My name is Claude, though. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I'm not that sensitive. I remember when I was a kid, in, in L New York, growing up in New York City, they used to call me Clyde. Uh, what was it? Clyde Crash Cup. There was a great cartoon uh, in those days. I'm showing my age again. So, But the thing about it is, if you found a way, imagine for a moment you could find a way to not have to tangibly do the deal. Oh, Tony, the legend, Pearl is here. There he is, the man. That good looking shaved head on the picture I always like. There you are, Tony. Hi, guy. How are you guys doing? And if I haven't said it already, hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving. And Mr. Ralph Newton is here too. Hi, Mr. Claude. Hey, Ralph. Thanks for joining. You guys have any questions as I'm going? Throw them up there. I will answer them. Um, this is a chat room too. It's not just me postulating for hours. Um, this is going to be about 45 minutes anyway, guys. I say 45, I'll probably ramble for 60 because I have a lot of information I want to share with you. I have a great business that gave me the one thing in life that we all want, freedom. Freedom to live where I want to live, uh, to, to take care of my family and my responsibilities, um, to have good health care and, and a retirement plan, to be debt free. That was a biggie for me because your Uncle Claude, believe it or not, when he was young, made a lot of stupid mistakes with money and credit and all the things that a lot of us do. I mean, some of you are a lot smarter than me. Um, I was a dummy with a lot of that stuff and I learned my lessons early. And today, um, you know, if my wife goes to me, uh, like to, we were in San Diego two weeks ago and she has, she loves this one pair of Nike Vapor sneakers. Do you know what those things cost? They're $190 and I said, honey, you work hard because she, she helps me in the business. I said, honey, let's just get them. And then we got two pairs, by the way, I surprised her because I had a good salesman anyway. I need a good salesperson. It says sucker on my forehead. Can you see the tattoo? I'm, I never meet good salespeople. I want someone who asks me questions, who sounds like they care, care, not just giving me presentations and script jazz. That's, you know, if, if you've ever heard me before, you know I believe that selling in 2020 is completely different if you want to get to that magical freedom place. We talk to a lot of people though, back to the deals, and they don't want us in the deal or we don't want the deal. It doesn't, we can't make money with it or it takes too much money or the numbers are just upside down. How can we turn, pardon the language, I hope the kids aren't there, take them away if they are. How do we turn, or if you're sensitive ears, not that I'm not a, I don't drop F-bombs, but I do talk like an adult to adults. I think sometimes we have to turn chicken shit in the chicken salad. And um, uh, hey, Coach P07 is here. Hi there. Is that Mr. Pinnell? We're talking later. Yes, absolutely. Um, I want you to, when you get a situation where somebody doesn't want to do the deal with you, go to them and say, you know what, Mr. Or I get people say to me, gee, why don't I do this myself? Now, the amateur salesperson would say, yeah, oh, no, you can't do it. You don't know how to do it. And they'd be argumentative. Does that bring them closer or further apart? It brings them further apart. And what I want to do is make money on this phone call. So I'll go to the prospect. And I'll say, you know what, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, why, you can do this yourself. Why don't you do a rent to own? Or why don't you hold the mortgage? Or why don't we do the subject too? We could, if, suppose there was a way, imagine for a moment, listen to my words, suppose, imagine. So they get a fantasy thing going in their head. This is a little Guts 2.0 now. That's something, and by the way, Guts 2.0, I'm gonna be releasing it in Hawaii this January, the 25th. It is the next evolutionary step into gut sales. And um, I can't wait. I am so look. I am so looking forward to this, and uh, showing you that there's another level of sales where you can make people emotional. Where you talk about the five senses. Where you, and something new I'm going to introduce. It's called guts, gutsosis. 
not, not hypnosis, gutsosis. It's where you make, where you talk to people and use your words, your adjectives, your verbs, and questions in such a way that people are watering like a Pavlovian, do a Pavlovian dog. No offense, Ingrid. Um, it's got a little dachshund running around here somewhere. Um, so when you get somebody on the phone, you say, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I think you could do this. You know, you should do this yourself. Suppose there was a way I could help you though. I have the contracts. I could help you set up a marketing plan. I could ask, answer or teach you simple, um, the simple way to set up the marketing. So you're getting people calling you all the time. I could show you how to negotiate the deal with a little guts. What's option consideration? What's positive cash flow or break even on your property? How to get it all covered? How to, how to, uh, I can explain the whole contract to you and I can show you a great way to do this yourself. Imagine you could put somebody in your home that you could make option money up front, money every month. You wouldn't have to pay a real estate commission. Sorry, realtors, but realtors, you could do this too. I'll talk about that in a second too. Let me make a note here. Realtors. I don't want to forget my good real realtors. You should be doing consulting also in, in all areas. It's a, you have a license, you have insurance. Why aren't you consulting in situations where you get people who want to sell their own home or do their own thing? Go to them and say, this is a way to do it. And you charge a flat fee. That flat fee can be, if you're just getting started and you're a little nervous, it's say it's a hundred thousand dollar home, charge them 500, a thousand dollars. It won't cost, it, just to get your feet in the water, build up your confidence and go, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, I can help you. I have a team of people and this is great for my mentees because they know they can call me and I'll always help them in a consultation. I just want to see them make money. Does that make sense? Um, so. Then later on, as you get more sophisticated, I would suggest you get anywhere from two and a half to 10%. If you're taking notes, write this down, okay? Two and a half to 10% of the value of the property. And you set up a formulation with them. Uh, what is consulting really? First of all, it's um, consulting is just sharing your knowledge, your past uh, experiences, both good and bad with people. And say, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Prosper, I made this mistake. I made these mistakes. I got the wrong tenants in. I did the contracts wrong. By the way, I can provide you with the contracts, a marketing plan, and I'm available. We could do a consultation once a week. You could call my phone if you have an emergency or text or email me. You've just become a consultant, a lease purchase consultant, or if you want to call yourself a, a wholesale consultant or a a creative, uh, a creative real estate consultant. There are so many people you talk to and they have a problem. We are the doctors of real estate, but they don't want to do a deal with this. I know this is hard to swallow because every guru, every, every guru at every seminar says, oh, the deals are all over. The streets are paved with gold. You know, that's bullshit. Okay. You know how hard it is to find a good deal. We're looking for needles in haystacks, but here's another strategy on your belt. I talked about this on Saturday. We, of course, we want to do cash as king deals. You want to do enough deals, make enough cash flow so you can make cash offers. Why? Because people it will readily accept a cash offer. But then you go to your lease purchase. And I talked about that. And see the other recordings I did. They're available. Um, if you're a subscriber of mine, uh, go to my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com, and hit the subscribe button or the free book button. And um, we'll, we'll update you with the video. I've done two other videos the last week on these topics of lease purchasing and consulting and everything else. Um, so you can do the cash, you can do the lease purchase. And you know, there's many different variables of lease purchasing. We've talked about that in my other videos. Sub, sub, sublet, sandwich, wholesale arbitrage assignment, um, a retail arbitrage assignment, all that. Then you can do owner finance, where the owner, maybe it's free and clear or they have a small mortgage, they, they, can, they can legally sell you the home. You can do a sales agreement and maybe they'll, they'll hold their equity and you can negotiate that in a lease or a contract. If they have a large mortgage, you can negotiate with them on a short term basis. I highly recommend check with your local laws and everything. But I but you could really just buy the home and take over their payments, their PITI, principal interest, taxes, insurance, homeowner fees, landscaping, whatever, and negotiate a deal with them with a balloon, which means that Mr. and Mrs. Prospect in five years, I will pay off your mortgage. But until then, you'll get a regular check with me or I'll bank the payments directly to the bank or mortgage company. So you could do that. You could do the owner, uh, a last one, owner finance, 
where the owner holds the property free and clear. I do see them sometimes and where the owner will hold the mortgage and you negotiate, uh, uh, you want to negotiate either. Uh, this is where it gets a little complicated. I prefer to negotiate principal only payments. Why? Because if I got a hundred thousand dollar property and it's a thousand a month and imagine 36 months and that every thousand dollars goes to bring that price down. All of it goes to the principal. So in 36 months, three years, you've reduced the purchase price $36,000. If God forbid it went up 10%, now you're sitting on $46,000 worth of equity just by, just by learning these different strategies. And then finally, consulting. Consulting is the strategy that no one talks about. It's just going to people and say, I can help you. I have a team. I have knowledge. I know lease purchasing. I know wholesale real estate. Suppose there was a way I could show you how to sell your home or do set up a rent to own on your home. I will charge you this flat fee and I will just share with you my time, knowledge and energy. OK, and this is just a great way to make money in between the deals. Here's the truth of the matter, guys. This is a business when you're just getting started. It takes a while to work up to where I know you all want to leave your jobs and everybody wants to make you know, get rich quick. You can't get rich quick. You can get wealthy slowly. Okay. So when you negotiate a deal with somebody, you got cash flow in between your other deals with consulting. So say you, it's a feast and famine, isn't it? Do you guys, do you guys agree? I want to see some comments here. Is it feast and famine? You better believe it. You know, sometimes I do, when I first got started, I do one deal and I thought I was rich. <clears throat> but all that money, I said this in the last broadcast, all that money went to pay off the last three months bills. OK, I thought, oh, my gosh, I just made this ten thousand dollars. No, it went to pay off the all the back payments, the car payments, everything else. You know, my credit cards from the last three months. So I could and then I was back at zero again. And that's the nature of this business. As you're learning, gaining more confidence and getting stronger in sales, you need to you need more cash flow. So what do we do in between deals? Ready? consult is I think nobody else talks about this. I do because it filled in the gap. So you make 500 here, a thousand here, 2,500 here. As you gain more confidence, as you do your marketing, which we'll get to in a second, as you do more and more marketing, more people call you. Or when you're calling them, when you're looking for deals and they don't want to touch the deal with you, for whatever reason that I explained earlier, you say, you know what, suppose I could just help you. You become a mini guru, a mini Uncle Claude if you want, whatever. This is what you have to learn. This is in my, by the way, everything I'm talking about today is in my Mentoring to Millions package. I have a consulting package that's on my webpage. I'm not doing a commercial, don't worry. I'm gonna have a sip of water first, excuse me. It's too early for beer. It's only 118 here and everything. I'm gonna have a yingling dark tonight. I just, somebody just told me all about it, my sister-in-law, yingling. You know, I do beer with Claude's on Fridays and Saturdays. I'm gonna have a yingling. I haven't had yingling since college. It was the cheap beer. And now uh, it's everybody's talking about it out here. It's really funny. So I want you to make money consulting. I want you to offer people solutions. I could help you. I have the contracts. I can help you lay out a marketing plan. Uh, we can do this all under a contract. Um, so here's an objection and I'll get to your questions. Got Lee White and every, Hey Lee, glad you could join us. Ed Pro, thank you. I'm going to, I'm going to answer your questions in a second, guys. I did not forget about you, but I want to talk about one important thing, financing. Okay. So you're going to go to somebody, let's say they have, um, let's say they have a quarter million dollar property. Uh, they need your help. You don't want to touch this deal. This is a deal. It's just, needs too much money, it's overpriced, it's upside down, it needs repairs, it's in a crap neighborhood, but you, but the person is motivated and they wanna pay you. What's, let's say a good 200,000, $250,000, you just, uh, you've done one or two deals, you have a little bit of knowledge, okay? Maybe you're in my mentoring program and you can call me up and say, Claude, this is the deal I have, and what are you gonna charge that person? I'd say if you're just getting started, like $5,000. So you go to somebody, pay me $5,000, um, they say, oh, my God, I don't I, I like what you said and everything, but I don't have five thousand dollars. OK, you can what you do is you, you negotiate to finance it. You this is careful. Listen, to this carefully, guys. This is how you make money in this business. I'm sharing everything with you like I always do. Charge them a consulting fee. So, you know what? Five thousand is a great deal of money, but I have to do a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of phone calls. I'm going to have to help you set up a marketing plan. You're going to text and call me quite a bit. And I want to see you succeed. And you're going to recoup that 5,000 anyway. 
setting up a rent own because your house should generate at least 10 to 20,000 in option money and 500 a month in positive cash flow. And then you'll make all the rest of your money at the end of the option. But that 5,000 is a lot of money. If money wasn't an issue, Mr. or Mrs. Prospect, would you want to work with me? Would you want to hire me? And they usually say yes, not all the time. Nothing is absolute. And then you go into finance. Suppose I've made a decision, important words. That's a, that's a gut psychological trigger I just gave you. You say, I have made a decision, Mr. and Mrs. Prosper. I want to help you sell the home. So you get the cash out of it. You set it up as a lease purchase with a good tenant and you can move to East Bumble, Florida. Okay, where is East Bumble, Florida? I know. <laughs> but, and then you say, suppose we could finance it. You put something down, pay me something per month. When we get the property, the option money, or we get it sold, you pay me in full. Boom. You've just become a consultant, a coach, whatever you want to call yourself. And guess what? When you work with other people on other problems, do you think that helps your learning ability? Yes. You become more experienced. You gain a lot more knowledge and you're helping somebody else while still being compensated for your time. And I'm not talking $15 an hour here. In many cases, um, you know, it's, it's reasonable when you divide the hours. Do you guys ever keep track of your hours? OK. Are you the Walmart greeter? Uh, getting 10 to $15 an hour, or are you a business person? I want you to be a business person where your time is worth hundreds of dollars an hour because you're shortening the learning curve and you're helping people avoid the problems. I always tell people, you're paying me to avoid all this, to learn about all the stupid mistakes I made so you don't have to do it, but then I'm going to show you the smart things I did. And my years of experience are going to shorten the learning curve. I'm going to, we're going to work together. I'm going to show you how to set up your home as a lease purchase. I'm going to charge you and I'm going to finance this at zero interest. Can we move forward today so that you have a happy ending? Okay. No evil thoughts there. Okay. <laughs> and that's what it's about. So that's how you, you negotiate lease per. That's how you negotiate consulting. That's how you finance it. That's how you set it up. Check the laws in your area, make sure everything's good. You're not representing people. Let me reiterate this here, just one point, and then I'll go to your questions. You are not representing other people, unless you're a realtor, you're licensed, or you're an attorney in your state. You are educating them, just like any other guru or speaker. You're, you're sharing knowledge and education, and you're giving your personal opinion. You are not legally representing them. There's a legal distinction there. I want you guys to be really clear on that, okay? You're not representing someone. You're, you're just sharing knowledge and advice. You've become a teacher, a coach, if you will, a motivator with knowledge or a consultant, my favorite word. Consulting is different from mentoring, by the way. Let me draw another distinction. Mentoring is a long-term one-on-one relationship. I've been mentoring people for 30 plus years. I love it. I love seeing the success of my students. I work very closely one-on-one. -on -one. I think I'm the only guy out here uh, in, the, um, in the guru biz land who doesn't hand off my consultation to an assistant or anything else. I just I want to give people the greatest value in the world. And that's what, how you should run your consulting business. Let's go to your questions here and then we'll move on to marketing. Okay. Cause marketing is an, uh, is a real important part there. Uh, let's see, uh, Mr. Ralph Newton. Hi Claude. Hi Ralph. Um, Bill Pinnell, Michael Buckles, Lee White, when consulting, do you give contracts filled out with sample data and a blank set? When consulting, do you give contract when consulting with somebody? Why would I give Lee? You're going to have to help me on this one. Why would I give a prospect sample con? Well, I, okay, yourself. I would give them blank contracts. You mean samples filled out so they know how to fill them out? Nothing wrong with that. I might give them a situation. I have been my uh, mentoring the millions package. I have, I don't know, 20, 25 different consulting agreements um, to fit the right to fit the right person, the right situation. Can you? Uh, you should give them a blank contract. And then offer, an, and then you can offer suggestions or opinions. Uh, it, my contracts, I try to, I tend to keep contracts very simple. Um, uh, so it says the price, it says the years, how long, um, all the different things that that are in the contract. I tend to keep them very simple so that people can fill them out themselves. If you want to give a sample with one filled out already, I don't think that I think that's fine. Uh, no, I have no, I have no objections to that really. So you send them the, uh, you send them the contracts or a contract folder 
Okay. The ones I sell people, I tell them, utilize them for your clients in, in a situation like that. If you want to check it with your attorney and your state's laws, that's fine. But basically, uh, contract consulting contracts are pretty simple. You need things in there that protect you, by the way. When you're doing consulting, you need a legal clause that says you are not practicing real estate. You are not legally representing them in a legal fashion or a medical fashion. You are just offering your opinion in this in this consultation. Um, the liability um, is severed, by the way. Uh, it, it's it, it's severed. It's not. And that they also. Um, what else do we want to put in? There's some legal stuff that's always good. Oh, do it as a corporation. Always LLC. Do your consulting separately so you're not personally liable, just your cons that's your LLC, always do that. And if you have a LLC for one business, start a new one, big deal, two, three, four hundred dollars $400, you've got all that protection. And you can also, if that business takes off, um, I started CCNR Property Investments Incorporated, I don't know, 28 years ago. That's my, that's my consulting um, corporation. It's an S corporation and it's grown up. To, it's grown to be a tremendous portion of my income, consulting, coaching, and mentoring. Um, so I hope you guys do it too. Blank set of contracts, not a problem, but, and maybe, um, you can give them a sample also, or make a recording. Here's an idea, Lee, make a sample recording. This is what I do when I do a consultation where it says price. I put my price. If I finance it, I'll say, Oh, they're putting your Mr. And Mrs. Smith, you're putting a thousand down. You're paying two fifty a month. You'll pay me in full after or when the deal is done. Otherwise, you'll just pay me month to month at no interest. This is not uh, practicing real estate or law or anything else. This is just me helping you out, teaching you. So you want a contracts like that. Um, Michael Buckles, I'm lease optioning on my next home. You, you can. Lease optioning is great. You can do that for your own home. Say you found a property. You're not ready to buy it. Maybe you don't have the down payment, money's tied up somewhere else. Maybe you're waiting to be at a job longer seasoning. Maybe you're looking to increase your credit. A lease purchase is a brilliant way to get into a home today and then buy it later. Make sure though, you're really adult-like, really mature. If you know you won't qualify for one year, don't do a one-year contract. Do a two or three-year contract. I love three to five-year contracts. Uh, but if you're buying your own home, make sure you're doing everything. Go to a Go to a, a consultant or yourself, go to a mortgage lender and say, what do I need to do to qualify for this home that I'm moving into? Well, I, what do I need to do to buy it in 18 months, 24, 36 months? Have a plan, lock in that 30, lock in that price, lock in the terms, negotiate with the owner. If they want to hold their equity, you can tie that into the contract too. All these things, uh, when you're consulting, tie in the financing and everything else in there and you'll, you'll love it. It'll be great. Let's see. Um, uh, we have some other questions there. And Tony, Tony, my friend Tony says, cheers. Thank you, Tony. Eugene LaBranche. I love that name. What is that? A French name? Um, très bien. That was beautiful. Claude. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, let's go to Michael. The, ah, thank you, Michael. Flattery will get you everywhere with this insecure little salesperson here. When I tell you guys that I'm the former world's worst salesman, I really mean it. Man, I couldn't give away money. I, I thought sales was like, I can't do that. I don't want to call these people and bother them and they're not going to like me and reject me. Am I, am I hitting a chord here, guys? Because that's what sales is really like for a lot of us. It was for me. And I really think sales changed my personality. I think it made me much more outgoing, more energetic. Uh, I'm passionate. It, it's, um, I talked a little bit last week, Saturday, about passion and practicality. You've got to love this business. I'll tell you right now, this is a, well, what, here's where I get in trouble again. Let me take a sip of vodka. I mean, water. It's water. It's too early here. It's only 129. Um, the thing about it is just, you, you got to do something you love. If you're in this business and your whole motivation is just money, money's good. Listen, we all want it. Okay. But the reason you can be successful in this business is if you have passion, if you love this business, if you love helping people get out of problem properties, getting into their first home, there's a great deal of satisfaction in helping people that nobody else can. And it's either you do the deal or you become a arbitrager. Boy, is that a topic for another broadcast? When I say arbitrage, I mean, you don't buy the properties. You just get the contracts and you sell them to other people and you finance them. 
uh, all and you're basically you're you're re, you're reselling properties as the principal or the um, officer of a corporation. Check the laws in your area. I got to always say that jazz. I know it's boring, but you know I want you to be on legal ground. And in most areas you are, but just make sure where you live because some you know I, I live part of the year in the Soviet socialist state of Southern California. They got more laws. They're regulating straws now. Can you believe it? I, I mean they're regulating everything there. Um, and I know you folks in Texas, you have some very um, draconian laws there too. So be careful on that stuff. I just want you to do it the right way. But the thing is, if you have passion, if you love what you if you love what you sell and you believe it benefits people, you can make as much money as you want. People can detect if you're sincere or if you're a phony like that. You know when you meet a first class bullshit artist, right? You know all they want is their hand on your wallet. They couldn't care less about you. This is my biggest gripe with girls. I'm going to get on my soapbox. I, they want to take your money, but they won't answer their own phone. They won't call, call you. All you get is voicemail, or you get their assistance, or you get their nice girl in the Philippines or something like that. Nothing against nice girls or people working hard in the Philippines. But my thing is I love accountability. I'm big on that. I think you guys work hard. I think you want success. I think if someone you somebody takes your money, they should be accountable to you. I always say one thing at the you know, I say a couple things at the end of every one of my broadcasts. I answer my own phone, 970-281-5151. It's my Google voice. It goes right to my cell phone. I'm not scared to talk to anybody. Okay. You can tell me you love me or hate me and tell me why. Don't tell me you hate me too much. I'm too sensitive. I cry at Disney movies, okay? Very hard on my sleep. Passion is so important. I always talk about one of my favorite, most moving books, Barbara Sinatar, Do What You Love, The Money Will Follow. It is so important to have passion in this business. Now, besides the passion, okay? I mean, I could talk, hope there's no, if you're a septic tank cleaner and all the septic tank cleaners that are on this broadcast right now, please accept my apology. I'm not picking on you. I just needed to pick something that's a little odious. If I told you that I was gonna give you a quarter million dollars a year being a septic tank cleaner, and God bless you, if you'd love being a septic tank cleaner, it's not a job I would have enthusiasm. Oh boy, you know, Sunday afternoon I go, oh boy, I get to clean the shit out of someone's house. I, don't, I mean, I'm being nasty here and judgmental, but so be it. I'm a fallible human being. But the thing is, even for 250 a year, I wouldn't want to do that job. I'm, I just, I, I just get this visual of a hot summer day and a lot of flies and some bad smell. Oh, hope you're not eating right now. Oh my God! But you got to have, you got to love what you're doing, and and then it's got to be practical. Why are we in business? Come on, let me hear it. We're in business to make money today. Can I have an amen, please? Thank you. Don't ever be ashamed of making money, paying your bills, being a responsible citizen, taking care of your family, putting mac and cheese on the table. I'm not talking about Lamborghinis and Jets and Bentleys. You know, these are the gurus that do all that crap. All I ever wanted to do was have peace of mind. I love having peace of mind. Going to bed and not worrying about money. Is, is really a wonderful thing in life. You don't want to retire and worry about money. You don't want to be middle-aged. You don't want to be a millennial and worry about money. You want freedom. And you can have that if you're superb in sales. So you've got to have the practicality and the passion if you're going to be a first-class consultant. Man, I'm really rambling on here today. Let's go. Uh, Elijah Justice, my, my word. Elijah, how are you? Hope you're having a good Thanksgiving. Haven't heard from you in a while. Um, let's go to who's next here. Uh, let's see. Yay. Looking forward to dealing in Lee White. Good. Um, does an agent owe broker money on a consulting fee or feet consulting fee? No, I know what you meant. Does an agent owe a broker? You know what? It depends on what you negotiated with your broker. You have diff different brokers have different contracts. I'd love to give you a ballpark answer. I personally would suggest um, if you're working under your license and your errors and omissions insurance while you're consulting, if you go to people and you say, I am a, an a agent or a broker with the ABC Realty, then yes, I would say ethically you do owe your broker a fee because you're using their facilities. Maybe you're using their information, the MLS, maybe you're under their license and you're under and, and under their insurance. Then I would say, ethically you do owe them. If you do it as a sole and separate business, and that means you have a separate corporation and you dis and you use a disclosure, you say this has nothing to do with my brokerage or anything else. 
and you make them sign that disclosure, which you realtors know more about than me, make them sign that and then do a separate contract. I think you're in good shape. I would still, I would, I would discuss it with my broker. Hey, do you mind if I do outside consulting on my own that has no, res no relationship to this real estate brokerage? Uh, I think it's a free country. You can start any business you want, but I, oh, I tend to be very open about it because you don't want your broker coming to you later and saying, hey, what are you doing? I'm hearing all about this. And you don't want to set yourself up for an embarrassing situation. Be upfront. Be, if they don't like it, find another brokerage. Big deal. You, you're allowed to set, for a, set up your own. God bless America. You're allowed to set up your own independent business. That's a great question, by the way, uh, Ed. Thank you. Let's move down here, Kevin. Hi, what percentage of your lease option clients ask you to teach them the process of doing a lease purchase instead of letting you do it for them? Thanks. What percentage of lease option ask you? That's a, uh, okay, how many people would rather, uh, I don't do it for them. You mean consult with them. I think you mean how many people do I, or I'm talking with, rather than let me have the property, do a consultation. That's a great question. I would say it's somewhere between 10 to 25% and more. I'd like it to be even higher. I'd rather consult. I'd say 25%, 75, 25. You know, the deal, working on a good real estate deal, uh, and when we're talking specifically about people who have contacted me, virtual attraction, who came to me, they want to buy, they want to sell, they want to invest, and uh, the, particularly the sellers have a property. Uh, I'm going to negotiate with them and make them three offers, a cash offer, a lease purchase offer, or an owner finance subject to type offer. If none of those work, then I go to consulting. I'd say 75, 25. I'll tell you right now, I've been in this business so long, I'd like it to be much higher. I would like to be 50-50 consultations and then actually just taking the cream of the crop deals. Your Uncle Claude's getting picky in his old age. I'd rather take the great deals, the easy deals, the deals that can flip and move fast, assign arbitrage. Some, a few you keep, most of them I want to turn over very quickly, make money up front, wash my hands of it. I don't want to get my hands dirty anymore. This is a business. Act like a business person or a consultant specialist. So if you know it's a great deal, it's in your backyard or nearby, you know you can make money on it by subletting it, assigning it, selling it, whatever you do, that's great because that's the big bucks. If, if there's nothing there before you get off the phone, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, I, I had a great idea. Instead of, you know, I know you don't want to do any of the things. You said you want to think about it, but you're not allowed to think about it. That just means no, doesn't it? And But how about we do this? I think, you know, you're, what do you do for a living? Oh, you're an accountant. Oh, you, you sell used uh, dental floss. That's wonderful. You're a business person. Use dental floss. Why do I say that all the time? <laughs> I think I cracked myself up. The thing about it is, why don't I help you do the deal? Uh, you can, we can brainstorm. We can design a marketing plan. I can give you some ideas. I can share some blank contracts with you, and you'll and you can do this all yourself. You don't. You just have to pay me a, a reasonable flat fee. You don't have to pay a real estate commission to my broker or anything or to anybody else. Does that make sense? Boom. So I hope that helped you, Kevin. It, it's really subject. It's a subjective question. I would dream, I would love more of my business to be consultation and assignment arbitrage than actual hands-on at this stage of my career. Remember, I've been doing this for 30 years. When I first did it, it was all hands-on. It was all deals. It was all um, mostly sandwich leasing. When I first got started, I'd get a property I'd, and I'd sublet or sandwich lease. It means if I'm paying the owner a thousand, I'd sublet it for 1500. If I was going to pay them under a contract, a hundred thousand, I would try to increase the purchase price at, when the option is exercised to 125,000. Um, I would try to get it under market or long-term or negotiate the rent. Uh, that's how I got started. But after a while, you want to evolve. You want to go to different things. You want to become a smarter, sharper investor and you want consistent cash flow. That's where the consulting is, uh, comes in. I call it mentoring to millions um, on there. Um, let's go down here. Another question, another Ke Kevin mentoring to millions, uh, show this question. I have a consulting question. Do you need a license if you can, Dave Skolnick, hi Dave. Uh, if you consult in, in over a certain amount of transactions and expectation of compensation, like in California, you need to license notes if you're not a principal. If you're not, you know what? Every state has different laws. When you're, I don't, 
And I'm going to give you a general answer, Dave. I know of no, I personally know of no regulations consulting in real estate. There's a blanket statement there. That doesn't mean I'm giving you a card blanche. It means check with your attorney, call your department of real estate. You're not representing other people. You are selling knowledge and information. Does every guru who goes to all these different states who talks about real estate and wealth building and financial advisement, do they have a license or in every one of those states? Of course not. And aren't they doing literally the same thing when they're doing public speaking at real estate clubs? So my general answer is that no. You do not need, I do not know of any regulation in consulting and coaching and mentoring in real estate or other fields. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist, so go check it. I'm sorry, I gave you the legal wimpy answer there because I don't want somebody just going out willy nilly and doing this stuff and getting into trouble based on what I said here. To always double check everything, it's so easy. Go online, make a phone call to the Department of Real Estate, call up, go to the board of, um, go, go online to the Bar Association. Let me, a little tip here, real quick. Time's going too fast. Go to your, in your state, go to the Bar Association on Google and look up an attorney that specializes in real estate or whatever area you wanna consult in. They usually, the first consultation is free. If you ask the right question right up front, you'll get a free consultation and maybe even a citation. That means you can look it up yourself if you don't want to Google for an hour or two, get an attorney to give you the citation if they know it and they're specialized in it and you'll get that all for free. If you want to go even further and it's maybe you have a state you're concerned about, so you pay them a couple hundred bucks and you have that peace of mind too. Good question though. Thank you. Um, you, <laughs> David, uh, um, Dave, uh, Dave Sculling says, you are my attorney. I'm a recovering attorney. I have a law degree. I do not practice. I think the law degree I got was some of the best education I ever got. It, it taught me how to think different, how to analyze it, law, having a law degree teaches you how to ask the right questions and where to research the answers. It teaches you to think logically. What's the pros? What's the cons? A good attorney has a nice, you know, that justice scale the, with the, where she's balancing the, the laws of justice. And, you know, it, it's good to analyze stuff when you're doing what's the pros, what's the con, what could go right, what could go wrong, and be so honest. Let's keep going here. Um, okay, that's it for, is that it for, that's it for questions and stuff. I'm going to now move before we run into out of time. I talked incessantly and fast, I hope you don't mind, about the consulting, which I love, start doing it. Let's talk about marketing for leads, okay? And this is also in my packages and lease purchase and in gut sales, all right? I am so, I have new mind maps in my packages too, by the way, on virtual attraction marketing. What is virtual attraction marketing? Big problem is you guys are spending, I'm sorry, I'm nagging you, you're spending way too much money on leads. Not a day goes by and somebody doesn't tell me, Claude, I'm spending all this money on all these mailers and all these virtual assistants. And um, this is where I get in trouble with my fellow gurus. They, they're going to kick me out of the guru union um, because they don't like what I, this is my opinion. It's not that they're wrong and I'm right or vice versa. This is just my opinion. And this is how I run my business. And I'm nobody special. If this works for me, it will work for you. Okay. If you're spending a lot of money on conventional marketing means, I mean, when the old school was newspapers and um, magazines, you remember that radio and TV, some of you guys did, then flyers, hanging, handing flyers out and knocking on doors. I know a lot of you love your driving for dollars. That's great. Except in California, gas is $5 and a lot of people have pit bulls. Okay. I'll let it go with that. So, uh, <laughs> The thing about it is, imagine for a moment you could generate leads that come into you, warm leads. I'd rather have three, four, five warm leads every day than thousand garbage leads, you know, where they're calling me back and where they're I'm mailing, well, you know, the mailing out postcards, auto dialers, um, you know, texting, um, leaving messages on other people's machines. I question the legality of that, by the way. Check with the FCC. There's some really stringent laws about bothering people using electronic communications uh, if they are on the do not call list or they have not invited you, if they haven't invited you in. You got to be careful on that. Check. Go to the FCC. I don't have the proper thing, but just say FCC uh, 
uh, uh, dialing and things, auto dialing and stuff like that. There's some tough laws on that that come with very high automatic fines. So be careful. There's a lot of gurus. That kind of ticks me off. They're giving wrong information about this stuff. You can buy a list from somebody else. I know there's listserv and stuff like that, all different kinds of lists, but the quality of those lists, I really question. I'm not anti-lists or anti-marketing. I just question the quality. And the trouble is you're not the first person to buy that list. And those poor people are on that list. Maybe it's you and me because I get a lot of junk call, phone calls. All that, You know those calls, those robocalls that we don't even get as much junk in the post office anymore. We get all these garbage robocalls. That's against the law to bother people. And a lot of these, uh, these people on the list, I don't know if they clean them as well as they should. And then if you buy that list, and then you um, put it in your automatic dialer, texter, automatic voicemail, or you give it to your virtual assistant and they bother people, you could be liable under some of the FCC laws. That's enough said on that, okay? Um, let's, um, so I, let's talk about generating leads. Um, I wanna attract quality leads and then use my gut sales method, which I've talked about in other videos. So how do I attract those leads? And I have my notes here and if anybody wants my notes, I'll be glad to take a picture and send those to you guys. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to do that. Oh, we have a quick question here. Hugo Malara. Okay. Hugo Malara was the gut salesman of the year in 2018. He was the gut salesman of the award. He, he won the Maxi Award, gave one of the best presentation using guts uh, on my private group call. Hi, Claude, I just joined the live call. Can you consult on other things other than real estate? Gee, what do you mean, Hugo? What other things? And still make a profitable business. The answer is an uh, is a qualified, unqualified, yes, absolutely. My, I, when I first, a great question, because it stimulates a, an a answer I think a lot of people will appreciate. When I first got started, you guys know my story. My lovely wife, Claudia, said um, she heard me on the phone giving all that free information, and she called me the word, the term of endearment that all New Yorkers use, schmuck, because I was giving away a lot of free information. And I said, who would pay me? And then I said, okay, let me try. And the next phone call was a lady um, from LA, and she had a whole bunch of problems with bad tenants. And I said, I think I can help you. And she said, oh, I'd like to come down to San Diego and buy you lunch. And I said, no. Um, uh, I charge a fee. I think in those days it was a thousand dollars and she said, no problem. And that was my first, I got to tell you what it feels like to have people pay you for your time, knowledge and, and energy. It, it is the most amazing thing you've ever, it, it, it'll make, it'll bring, it'll, it's the second, I call it the second best feeling in the world. I will not consult on the first. Okay. It's not my, uh, it's not what I, it's not, it's above my pay grade there. You can consult on anything you have expertise, knowledge, experience on. Doesn't mean you've got to keep learning. I read newspapers, books, audio books every week, almost every day. I'm always reading and trying to learn and stay on top of my field. So if you want to consult in, I love consulting in sales. I went from lease purchasing to sales. Um, now I, lease, I consult people in marketing. I'm no Gary Vaynerchuk, but I do listen to him, by the way. Um, I believe he pr he says the same thing I say, and um, he's running a $600 million business now on Madison Avenue, New York, just talking to companies about what I'm talking to you for right now for free. He gets paid millions of dollars to, to talk about what I'm giving you guys right now for free. You can do all your marketing on social media. What do I mean by social media? Let's start with video. Okay, I record videos every week on YouTube. I record them actually in Zoom. I put them on YouTube. And then I, I, I kind of cross-pollinate them to Facebook, to Twitter, um, to, um, I'm checking my notes here, to Instagram, to, um, oh my God, links in Reddit. Um, I put them all over the place. Vimeo, I don't know if I said that. So I'll do it in, in YouTube. You upload it, you record it in Zoom or some, I like Zoom because the quality is superior in Zoom for recording. They actually enhance you, see no wrinkles. <laughs> the thing about it is you, um, you make the recording in Zoom, you upload it to YouTube, and then they have the little buttons on the bottom. You click them all, Blogger, Facebook, Twitter. You can put them in your groups in Facebook and on your pages and all that place. And this is, you're just putting this out. You got to have a nice little sexy title, how to do a sandwich lease, how to, do, how to sell a lease purchase contract in 30 days or less. Put in interesting titles. Put in the description box what you're going to be talking about. 
for God's sakes, keep your video short. I would suggest two to four minute videos, no longer. Speak extemporaneously, that's a $10 word. Don't just, don't just read a script, it's boring. Talk about your experiences in the subject matter you want. Put a good description in there. Put in your hashtags in YouTube. I love YouTube. YouTube to me is just free million dollar marketing. I have thousands of people who follow me on YouTube. Thank you. I am so grateful. You follow me, you give me thumbs up, you go to my webpage. And that's the whole point to stop being a secret. And so if I, I then cross pollinated, I, uh, I copy the link that YouTube gives me. I manually put it into LinkedIn. I uh, put it into Vimeo, uh, all these different. So these are the top social media pages. Why aren't you using them? I put these videos in and people watch them, they share them. By the way, ask people to share and give you a thumbs up. When they hit share, if that's somebody who has 10,000 um, subscribers on their page, guess what? They get to see your video. So make sure you always suggest that people share videos. I hope you guys watching me right now on Facebook and on YouTube right now, just a shameless plug, you're hitting your share button if you think this uh, offers some value. Okay, I comb my hair and everything. I got a haircut for you guys. My God, what are things I do for you? Listen. Um, you've got to go out there and put out, uh, I like, I have a face for radio. So naturally I make, I have a thousand plus videos on YouTube. I love it. It's worked. People see the video. I, I think I captured their interest. They watch my other videos. I hope there's a subscribe button and there's links to my webpage, claudiamond.com. I use a webpage called Blab, Book Like a Boss, which is the most marvelous, easy to use webpage. If you need the link for Blab, I can give you a free demo link. Um, so you don't have to pay to use it and you can fool around with it, but it's one page. It's easy to set up and design. You can make the changes. You can sell products. You can have videos in it. You can have a, a scheduling calendar in it. And people see this, they go to my webpage. I create incentives. So after they know who you are and they want more information, give them something for free, Get, bring them closer and closer into your world. So they don't know you, you're a stranger. And the beautiful thing about virtual attraction marketing, using all this social media, is people can feel like they know you. You go on there and they, they oh God, this I like the information, I don't like them. Um, they, you know, they make a decision. So get your information, by the way, it has to be compelling. It has to be interesting. It has to be relate to topics, topical topics, if that's a, if I'm allowed to say that. I don't know if that's good grammar. Topical topics, I think it'll fly. You could share information with people that's of interest, that's pertinent, that's contemporary. Talk about things in the news today that relate to the consulting area that you're in. Tell people if they want more information to go to your webpage, to subscribe to you, offer them something for free, a free white paper, a free gift card if you want, a free book, a free consultation. I always say to people, call me. I answer my own phone, 970-281-5151. I'm looking forward to, I'll be happy to do a free consultation with you. Or if you want a free book, go to my webpage, claudiamond.com. Boom. Just like that. People go there. I capture their emails. I send them free information. They're in my system, so they get follow-up in, in uh, emails. I don't blast emails except for Black Friday, guys. This is the only one time of the year I'm going to be a, a hemorrhoid in your life. But I, uh, the deal that we're giving for Black Friday is amazing. So all of you who subscribed uh, to my webpage or to this broadcast, you're going to get an unbelievable Black Friday promotion. I only do it once a year, and we're going to drive you nuts with a, with my good friend Yassine is probably going to send out way too many emails, and it's just because it's that good a deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so make sure it's social media. Now, there's other kinds of social media. There's things like Blogger where you can do writing and things like that. If you're a writer, do blogging. If you love pictures, if you love taking pictures with your camera all the time, okay? I love taking pictures uh, with my camera. Let me show you some of my pictures. I did it, I posted this, um, okay. Uh, I posted this the other, <laughs> the other day. Um, I saw this man, he looked like Gandalf at the airport, okay? And I had to take his picture. I love pictures. And everything, and I, you know, and I just thought, boy, if this guy could be in Lord, couldn't he be in Lord, Lord of the Rings? Absolutely. And people, I put that uploaded to Pinterest, to Instagram, to Facebook, to Twitter. People, if you love taking pictures and you feel you can set up a message and put some compelling text underneath, that's another way of generating attracting leads. You want to bring people in 
to your business. They, you want them to learn who you are. You want them to see that you're a credible, decent, accountable, transparent, knowledgeable, responsible. I can't think of any more adjectives, human being. Okay, I'm a man of few words today, right? No, see, <laughs> the, see, I make fun of myself. I love disparaging humor. Um, the thing about it is gut sales made me much more confident. My, it changed my personality. So I needed more leads. The more people I, bottom line here, the more people you speak to, the greater the likelihood you're going to do a real estate deal or a consultation or whatever you want a consultant. Absolutely. Let's talk about some other things. Live streaming. I'm doing live streaming right now. If you guys are interested in this, send me an email, uh, mentor at Mac or something, uh, mentor at Mac.com. I'll send you the link. I'm using uh, right now StreamYard. I have a free demo link for that too, if you want. Um, so you can try it out. And I'm broadcasting simultaneously on six different systems. This is live streaming. So if you have a Boca de Grande like I do, you go out, you talk to nice people, you answer their questions, you get them to learn who you are. I know you guys, how hard you work how decent you are, and you just want to put mac and cheese on the table. Send, if you've got a message or you want to share information, this is the medium to do it, live streaming. You can do live streaming from Zoom, by the way. If you have a Zoom account, you can actually broadcast either to Facebook or Twitter. There's a good little technical tip here, okay? And um, you can just put out a lot of inform more information you put out there and your opinion. And keep it unscripted, okay? You know this is a script, right? I'm reading a telemark, uh, teleprompter right now. No, I'm just talking to you guys about my experiences, both good and bad. It's uh, you like it, you love it, you hate it, it's okay. Um, but this is my way of marketing, live streaming. Brilliant way to attract new leads every day, okay? And we're almost out of time here. Every day I get people text me people on my 970-281-5151 number. I get people who email me with questions and things like that. I get people who actually call me up. I get people who register on my webpage. I get people who schedule on my webpage for a free 15 minute consultation. The more, this is the biggie, because we're almost out of time. This is the biggie. Social media marketing will bring people, the prospects to you. Why do you want to spend money? This is crazy, it goes, it drives me nuts. If I hear one more person say, oh, I'm spending all this money and all this marketing and I'm getting one tenth of one percent response rate and they're shit calls. Sorry for the bad language. It, it, you know, just give me I always say, can you speak to five people a day? And out of those five people, if they were people who came into your world, who like your message, like your information, like what you're talking about, feel they can do a real estate lease purchase deal with you, you will see magic happen if you use that. The guts marketing method. This is a guts marketing method I developed, and it works so well for me. It, it's so much easier to deal with warm prospects every day than to deal with cold calls. There's still a place for cold calling, and there's another place for follow-up calls because your Uncle Claude doesn't close everybody, of course. But if I speak to someone, we have a respectful, decent conversation. They're not a flying, flaming nuclear you-know-what. I'll put them in my follow-up system, which I have, and that's in my guts marketing, by the way. Um, I'll put, I'll follow up, I'll give them a score, I'll call them back in a week, in a month, whatever. That's all I have to do. If I speak to enough people every day, I give good phone. And I'm, by the way, when you speak to people, go, for God's sakes, get an iPhone. And I don't work for Apple, my daughter does though. Um, you, on, Apple, on the iPhone, we have something called FaceTime. I always talk about this. If you have their phone number, automatically, ask Siri even, I hope she doesn't come on. Um, you can make video calls on FaceTime. When we're face to face, tell me how much better that is. It's so much better. Um, if you're a blogger, if you like to write, use blogging. Make sure you have a simple web page, not these web pages with all these tabs. So when you do this kind of virtual attraction marketing, they have a place to go to get more money, uh, get more money, get more materials from you for free. Schedule a free session because you want to talk to them eventually, or you want to capture their email, send them a video email, or call them up. It's this simple. Talk to enough people, set up your marketing plan, use gut sales, asking questions like an adult to adult and set up this virtual attraction marketing like I'm talking about with videos, audio, podcasts, um, public speaking. I do a lot of public speaking. Um, in January, I'll be doing a mastermind in Hawaii, January 25th. That's, on, uh, that's great stuff. Uh, let me know if you're interested. Uh, we have a few seats left. 
uh, or I'm doing also in San Diego at the SDCIA. I'm, I'm speaking in San Diego um, in February. I forget the date, but it's on the SDCIA uh, real estate page. It's the largest, most lovable, wonderful real estate club in the world. I'm sorry, I'm prejudiced. I love this real estate club. And, um, and I'm also doing a morning seminar on gut sales 2.0 uh, in February also. Shh, don't tell anybody. A couple quick questions, and I'm going to call it a day, guys. Um, let's see. Scripts are caca. Thank you. I, I agree, too. Scripts are garbage. You know, you guys don't need a script. You are wonderful people. You are, you've got the personality. You've got the knowledge. You've got the integrity. Don't use these garbage scripts from these gurus. All they, all they do is turn people off. You know this because you know when they're using a script. It's, it's speak genuinely to people and you don't even have to be a good actor when you speak sincerely to people. Dave Skolnick, uh, let's see. We get another Uncle Claude, what do you do when lease purchase consultation? Do you find them, the buyers as well, tenant, or do you charge more? Um, when you do a consultation, I don't find them anybody. I don't do it. That's their job. This is the best part about it. You don't have to find them the buyers. You don't have to buy them the sellers. You just have to share knowledge and teach them how to find and buy. You become a marketing expert. And that's if you do have somebody and you want to suggest or refer them to that, that might be another income source. Wink, wink, nod, nod. OK, so think about that. Uh, the good, good question, Anthony. I'd love to get more into that, but we're almost out of time. I just want to get through all your questions here. Dave Skolnick, for consulting, do you suggest setting up a credit card terminal to get paid first before giving? Absolutely. You get a commitment under the gut sales method, agenda, qualification, commitment, close. That's the third step. You always get a commitment. You always tell, when should we talk about money? Always up front. No free consulting, guys. Give enough thought. What you want to do is get the prospect talking about their problem. Say if there was a solution that was reasonable for your budget and could solve the problem, would you be considering paying somebody for that? Yes, you do need to set up a credit card terminal. The easy one is PayPal. I have a credit card. I have two dedicated credit card terminals, you know, the little machines and they can put cards in and things. I use those two from major banks and I have a third one on PayPal. I have a merchant account on PayPal. It's $30 a month. It's worth every penny. Don't worry about the interest or the monthly charges. If you're consulting, you're making a lot more money than those things do. Start with PayPal and you can you can run credit cards on your phone or anywhere just by inputting that in. Good question, Dave. Thank you. Um, uh, what was the other question here? Uh, we got, hello, I'm a newbie. Well, welcome, Mr. V. Velasco. It's Mr. J. Velasco. Welcome. Glad you could join us. Um, do you create a new LLC for consulting? I think that's a brilliant idea, Anthony. It's cheap. It offers you protection. It gives you tax benefits. Um, it offers you protection. Did I say that? It also allows you, if your business is successful, you can get new credit. It's like a new person. You can get new credit cards and everything on that one thing. Uh, let's. Um, so that's a uh, good. Dave Skolnick again, February 11th, SDCA training on Saturday the 15th. Thank you. That is uh, February the 11th in uh, San Diego. I'll be speaking there. And then I'm doing a actual morning seminar on guts 2.0 on the 15th uh, you've got to be a member of that club uh to or you got to be one of my mentees to actually attend that okay and he met february and that's all your questions i'm a, i'm i'm abusing my privilege from my lovely sister-in-law is letting me use her house and her wi-fi right now um i want to wish all of you uh what keep a watch for the black friday special it's coming in your email um if you like this broadcast give me a thumbs up share it with everybody else I want everybody here. Thank you. Um, I'm successful because of pe wonderful people like you. Um, and um, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, especially with this Thanksgiving coming up. Have a wonderful, um, have a wonderful, safe, healthy, happy Thanksgiving. Remember, just because you fall asleep on the couch with a can of PBR in your hand after the, watching the football game after Thanksgiving dinner, that does not make you a bad person. <laughs> okay, listen, nobody deserves success more than you. I do answer my own phone, 970-281-5151. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Take care.